because it's super long, but uh, those are some of the music things and art of the time. Then we have the sexual revolution, which I've already talked to you guys about a little bit. And during this, like I said before, uh, a lot of people rejected sex from traditional family life. And, you know, you, we already talked about it. Anyhow, so we have a lot of hippies who lived in communes. A commune is a small community of people who share resources together. They, uh, they live together maybe in one big house. Uh, everybody shares food sometimes. You know, they even share sexual partners. Um, they raise their kids all together sometimes. It's kind of a weird situation. But a lot of people, they, I wouldn't say a lot, but some people did this during the counterculture. And one of the good things was it did lead to a more open discussion of sex in terms of people, you know, maybe getting help if they're being sexually abused or um, people being able to ask questions, women gaining access to birth control and contraceptives and things like that. So that was a positive aspect of it, but a negative aspect of it was that um, it kind of broke down the traditional family a little bit and it also resulted in people getting a lot of sexually transmitted diseases. Okay, now let's talk about Haight-Ashbury. Haight-Ashbury is a district in San Francisco, and uh, you can see the picture of the sign there. It's still there today. But in 1967, this was the center of the counterculture, okay? If you wanted to be a hippie, this is where you would go, okay? And in Haight-Ashbury, we had a lot of young people uh, living in this region of San Francisco. They experimented with drugs. They wore different kinds of clothing. They were having sex with multiple people. And they were experimenting with different kinds of music. And, you know, some of you might think, oh, that sounds pretty cool. But it definitely had its downsides. And one of the reasons that so many people were like, oh, yeah, this is awesome. We can totally do this. There was a guy. His name was Timothy Leary. He was a former Harvard researcher, like super well-educated guy, and he encouraged them to, to use drugs. He said, you should tune into your mind and your body, tune into drugs, drop out of mainstream society, you know? Um, and, every, and I'm thinking like, holy cow, you're encouraging people to do drugs because drugs mess your life up. Don't do drugs. Moral of the story. Don't do drugs. But he was encouraging them to do this. Um, in this picture of Timothy Leary, he says, Is there life after youth? I can assure you that there is. Okay? But this high drug use leads to increased crime. Drugs cost money. And a lot of these people who start doing drugs, it consumed their lives. They didn't work. All they did was do drugs. Drugs cost money, so they start to steal. They start to commit crimes in order to get these drugs that they need, and they become addicted. As a result, we're going to see that there's going to be a lot of drug overdoses. There's going to be a lot of crime. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people whose lives were ruined because of drug use. Okay, then let's talk about spirituality. Uh, during the counterculture, one of the things that a lot of people or a lot of individuals experienced, experimented with was Buddhism and other Eastern religions that emphasized, you know, harmony with nature and, and spirituality, that kind of thing. But that was a big deal. Uh, some of these people lived in communes and they lived off the land and they are going to be the first tree huggers. They are going to influence the environmental movement that is going to come later. One other thing I forgot to mention about the clothing, we're going to see that members of the counterculture, they represented such a large consumer group that clothing stores and manufacturers, they started to make all of these hippie clothes because there's a lot of people who will buy them because this, this um, at the time, the percentage of Americans who were under 17 years old was 36% of the population. 
Usually that number is less than 25% of the population, but this baby boomer group is huge. Okay, by the end of the 1960s, people become disillusioned with the counterculture. They're like, okay, it's kind of shallow, it's kind of self-centered, and it's kind of stupid. Uh, drug addiction and deaths were on the rise, and that was a huge problem. And then there was a tragic music festival in California. Okay, so at this music festival, you know, they're promoting peace, love, harmony, all this kind of stuff. So the Rolling Stones are performing, and whoever was in charge of security, they hired the Hell's Angels, you know, the motorcycle guys to be security at this particular festival. Well, the Hell's Angels, this black dude, approached the stage, and they stabbed him to death. And everybody's like, whoa, wait, he didn't do anything. Like, this is weird. And this violence went against the whole idea of the counterculture, peace and love. And so that was kind of a, something that led to the downfall as well. But like I said, this counterculture became very self-centered. It was, it's all about me and getting my drugs and all this kind of stuff. Okay.